Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about the nomenclature, the naming conventions of lines in geometry and also line segments. And there's a difference between lines and line segments, and we'll see that in just a moment. A line can be defined as having only one dimension, the dimension of length. And that's why length and line, of course, are very similar words. They mean basically the same thing. And the symbol is a straight line, and we simply annotate it with an L for line, or maybe line A, B, or C, doesn't really matter, but typically we have a symbol saying this is the line, and we just draw a straight line like this. Now notice we do want to make a differential between lines and segments, and we have a specific way of doing that in geometry. A line segment is just a piece of a line. When we draw a line, we assume that the line will continue in both directions infinitely far. And that's what the definition of a line is. But if you want to cut just a piece of that line or an annotate just a piece of that line, we call it a line segment. And we, we denote the start and the end point of that line segment. And we'll put a little line on top. So this symbol right here means there's a line segment starting at A and ending at B. A ray has a starting point but no end point. It's kind of somewhere between the line and the line segment. So just like a line segment has a start and an end point, a ray has a start point but no end point, meaning it goes on forever in one direction, but it has a starting point in the other direction. So we write the symbol AB with an arrow on top. On the left, we don't have an arrow symbol, just like we have for line segment. That means that's where it starts. But on B, we have a little arrow there, which means just because we put the letter B there, we don't mean that it ends there. It just keeps going forever. And then finally, when we want to have a symbol for a line, we then indicate with the little arrows here that it goes on forever, from A to B and beyond in both directions. So we put AB down because that defines the location and direction of the line, but the little arrows indicate that it goes on forever in both directions. So this would be the preferred way to write the line. It goes through point A, it goes through point B, and it goes on forever in both directions. Now usually a line is defined by two points. All you need is two points anywhere on a plane. You draw a line between those two points and that defines the direction of the line. Here we have AB is a line segment on the line L1. So when we write this like, like this, we can say that this piece of the line between A and B can be considered a line segment on the entire line L1. Here we have two lines drawn one labeled L1, the other one labeled L2, and they're parallel to one another. Parallel means that no matter how far we go out in the distance, forever, those lines will never intersect in any direction. They will really always keep the same distance from one another. If the lines are oriented differently, then we call them skew lines, and if that's the case, at some point, somewhere on the plane, they will intersect at that particular point. This is called the point of intersection, and these two lines are now skew lines. They're no longer parallel. Lines can also be perpendicular, so they're basically skew lines, but in such a way that they will form four right angles when they intersect. You can see here that these angles are definitely not right angles, but here, when they cross one another, in a perpendicular fashion, when the lines are perpendicular to one another, they form four right angles, meaning each of the four angles is 90 degrees. Four times 90, of course, adds up to 360 degrees. Collinear points. Well, that means that both of them are on the same line. Co means together. And so together on the line, two points are collinear. For example, A and B are two collinear points because they're both on the line L1. Perpendiculars don't cross one another. That's the difference between two lines crossing one another like this in a perpendicular fashion. They're perpendicular to each other, but since they're lines, they go on forever in, in both directions. Perpendiculars do not cross one another. So these are perpendiculars. These are lines that meet at right angles. So we don't cross one another. We simply end at the other line. And here we can say that DE is the perpendicular bisector. Now, DE is a line segment. It starts at D, it ends at E, and perhaps I can denote that with a little point right there so we know that it doesn't go on forever. Also, we have a line segment from A to B. 
So I can draw little dots there indicating this is just a line segment. Now, notice that if DE is considered to be a perpendicular bisector, bi means two and sector means sections or halves, we can then say that the line segment from A to B is divided into exactly two equal pieces. If that's the case, then the line segment DE is called a perpendicular bisector. Also, if it's, we consider that if angles 1 and 2 have a measure of 90 degrees so that it's perpendicular, of course that's the definition of the bisector, it must be a perpendicular bisector, that these must be 90 degree angles, and that means that where they cross, that's the midpoint of the line segment that's being crossed by the perpendicular bisector. If there's a perpendicular bisector, that means there's a point where they cross that divides the line segment that's crossed by the perpendicular bisector into exactly two equal halves, their equal length, and therefore the point C is right in the middle of that line segment. So these are some additional names and nomenclature that you need to know in order to understand geometry. In this particular case, it's specific to lines and line segments. So let's keep going and learn all the names we need to know so we can handle geometry. And that's how it's done.